day some, have you had time to think about the, uh, the occasion, the milestone and what it means? Um, a little bit, not really. Obviously once you get into the season things roll around pretty quickly. Obviously I've known it's coming. Um, it hasn't probably been until I've had some conversations with um, close friends or even some of my teammates. Sunday Detch has been around a while. He was kind of telling me how big of a moment it is, even though I'm trying to undersell it. So, yeah, a little bit, but not, not fully. And why is that? Why, why are you trying to play it down? You don't want to be a fan, fan, you just want to go about your job? Yeah, I think I've just, I've made a whole career about it being about everyone else but myself. Um, so when it's really highlighted on you and you can't get away from that, I guess I, I don't struggle with it. I just would rather it be about everyone else except me. Does that um, sort of sum up your career in a way that you're still on this occasion when you're heading towards game 400 still trying to put your teammates hurt? Yeah, I think it's one thing when you think about, when I try and think about my career, I've always been really true to myself in terms of it's never been about me, the individual. It's always been about what the group needs. Some people I've known who you know quite well in Shane Hill and people like that used to say it was to my own detriment, but but it's just who I am. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm wired that way. I, I care about my teammates. I care about the clubs that I play for, and, and that's no different whether I'm playing game 400 or game one. Does that sort of reinforce then, like that team ethos when you get guys like Sunday and other players in the team sort of bigging you up about how big it is? Does that sort of reinforce that? how big it is that the rest of your team knows it's such a big thing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And we probably live in a day and age where we're seeing less and less people play this amount of games, I guess. And and um, I guess for a number of years, um, as I watched, the, I was, and I was a fan of the NBL, we've seen a lot of the same guys every year and they played a lot of games where we're probably not seeing as many do that. So, so having some of my teammates talk about it and kind of emphasise how big it is definitely makes me realise that, because when it is your, your co-workers and people like that, it, it definitely carries a lot of weight. What about back at the start? What were your goals, what were your ambitions when you, when you started playing? Well, as you know, Case, my career started on the back foot a little bit. I had that car accident. So as when I was a young fella, all I wanted to do was play in the NBL. My dad was the CEO of the Western New Razorbacks. I was heavily involved and in, around it since I was about six or seven years old. So for me, it was about playing in the league. Um, did I ever think I'd be playing game 400 and in my 15th year? Probably not, but here we are. And so when I think about all the things I thought about as a kid, it, it definitely is pretty cool to stand here today knowing that that's approaching. And what's been the best moment? I mean, Tom Games gold medal, Asia Cup gold medal? Um... Yeah, there's, there's parts in it all, I guess. You, you find joy in even some of the average seasons as well. Some of the relationships you make and the friendships you make over the years. Um, playing for the Boomers uh, time in, time out has been one of the greatest experiences I'll ever have as a basketball player. But every NBL year, even some of the really bad ones, I've, I've found enjoyment or I, I've, I've just had moments within that that I've really enjoyed and that's from, from year one all the way through. So I've, I've loved every bit of it in its own capacity. It all brings different moments of joy or or things you're not so happy about as well. What about the last couple of seasons as well? When you came back, a big thing that was spoken about was your leadership. And Do you feel that you've had to, even more so this year, obviously with the change of coach, had to take on that role and make sure that the, the team chemistry stayed right at a time when it easily could have all gone out of control? Yeah, at times it's fallen on me, and at times it's been hard because there's things I've probably been trying to do knowing that it probably was never going to make an impact because there was other things going on, and that's not just talking about here in Adelaide. Um, one of the greatest things for me right now is being, uh, me and DJ Vesuvius have a really good relationship and, and we're roomies on the road and seeing his leadership grow uh, and I can tell I can tell he looks at me sometimes to be like I'm on the right path and for me that's one thing I love, just seeing someone like that who cares and he's trying to now move into that place of, of his life where he's trying to be a leader and there's times where I know I have to speak and there's times where I know I have to just sit and watch and let other people figure it out and and that's, I guess, one of the greatest things around when you've been around a while, you start to figure out times to in inject yourself and times just, I think this can play itself out. And if it can, without my help, then, then we'll be all the better for it. Is that something that happens naturally? Does he, or does he go to you as a new captain, look, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to be a, be a better leader? Is that just something that happens naturally? I think it's naturally. We speak a lot, as I said, we're, on the, we're roomy, so I feel like we've been together more than I've been at home lately with all our road trips. But he's, he's a guy that's ever... He's always thinking and trying to get to different places and trying to learn different things. So it's more natural conversations we have. But um, I guess 
I know what the conversations are because I know what he's trying to do. So I, it's more me probably reading the situation than him knowing what we're talking about. You're still in great shape having an impact on the floor. Have you thought about next year? I presume that you're, right now, you're playing again next year. Yeah, I, I feel good. I'm only 33. I think that's the one thing. Normally when people get to this, they're probably a bit older. I'm 33. I started playing when I was just turned 18. Um, my body feels good. I've really enjoyed um, playing for Mike. You asked a question before, our new coach. It's, it's been really refreshing having someone uh, someone like him around who just kind of, his experience in basketball is second to none and his understanding of things around the game, things within the game, things outside the game. For me, it's just been a place I've really enjoyed um, under Mike Wells. And um, yeah, I'm open to anything. I'm just really enjoying basketball at the moment. It, it's been a while since I've probably had a stock standard role of just coming off the bench and plugging holes. and. Uh, there was a game, I think, two nights, uh, two games ago, where Mike said, "I need to get, need to get you in more." I said, "No, you don't. Starters are doing their job. Let them go." And so we have a, a great relationship, and um, yeah, whatever will be, will be. Are you optimistic about this year? I mean, the 36 yeah. haven't played finals for a while, and obviously that's the goal. This season. Looking at playoffs. Yeah, and uh, it's it's realistic. You never want to get too far ahead of yourself, but but I've been around long enough, and I know when there's something sitting there that could become really good. It's going to take a lot of work. We've got a long way to go. A long way to go. But um, the people we have around, the talent, the different kind of ways we can play, I think we can be very different to every other team. And um, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I go home and speak to people like my dad and say I'm really excited. But I, I'm also a realist in terms of there is a lot of work that needs to go into it. But I think we've shown three and three to start the year with kind of our schedule and certain things that have taken place. I think we're in a pretty good place right now been a, a long talk about Trez if, if he stays or if he doesn't uh, how hopeful are you that he will stay around would love him um, you hear all these different things like in the basketball world about people and before and I've always been a big person of I'll always judge a person when they're standing in front of me and I think he's been great it, what you see on the court his personality is who he is in real life he very much is a loud personality but he means it in all the right ways and I think he start he calls himself the Aussie monster uh, that's his name on my, in my phone. <laughs> but um, I think he's starting to really embrace being in Australia too and enjoy and, and enjoy being here. And it shows out on the basketball court. And obviously there's that big spanner of now we throw Jarrell back in whenever he's ready. But for me, that's a great problem to have. And, and the one thing about Trez that everyone probably forgets is he's made a career of coming off the bench. I, I don't think his ego is too big to say I'm happy to come off the bench and, and he'll have the same impact and same minutes as if he was starting. Where does he rate amongst the bowlers, should I ask you? Who's the best player that you've played with? Ah, oh, this question's loaded, Case, the best player. <laughs> I've played with a lot of good ones over the time and a lot of good imports. Trez is up there for sure, like Josh Childress, Al Harrington. I've had some, some teammates who have done some great things in the NBA. I always go back to someone that you'd love and, and Kevin Lish was one of the... When I was around Kev in Sydney, it made me a way, a, a way better player. He's how good he was on both ends of the floor. His ability to hit big shots. He's I always used to call him a certain name, but then he's off the court. He's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. So he's one that stands out for me. But I even go back to my early days of playing with um, Adam Gibson and James Harvey and Anthony Petrie and Mark Worthington. Like those guys did a lot for me in my younger career and and. Um, I've been very fortunate with some of the teammates I've had over my time. What about a toughest opponent? Jeez, there's been a few of those too. Um, obviously, even right now, you look at people like Bryce Cotton. Um, I always used to talk about Casper Ware. Um, guys like that who come over to the league um, and just could play on both ends of the floor and make things happen really, really quickly. If you, if you had a moment off, it was over. And so some of the guys we've had in this league over the years have just been incredible and they continue to get better and better so it, it's always good to see the talent we can draw and you mentioned your dad uh, put your mum and dad's influence on you and the fact that he's won a championship does he remind you about that or just talk about you know, what they uh, have been no he does remind me that he won the first ever NBL title and I haven't been able to do that um, but no I, I am very fortunate to have mum and dad it, it's when you can pick up the phone and ring and I've got to learn this as I get older. One of the coaches or guys that his knowledge of basketball is, in terms of people I've been around to, it's right up there with the best. And so to have that in your dad, 
sometimes we've got to separate his dad and the basketball mind he is and, and mum as well. It's really been something that I've used over my career and it's it's not even used, it's just a natural thing for us. Like my partner always says we go to dinners and all we do is talk basketball, but that's just kind of been our life and um, it extends through my family to Gran and, and Dean and, and their their dad when he was around Colin. It's just been a thing of our life and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited and um, if I could get an NBL title so Dad couldn't talk about it, that'd be nice. Um, and just finally, you mentioned the start, the rocky start that you had. Was there, there must have been some doubt after that accident about you being able to fulfil your, your potential? Yeah, there was, um, there was doubt in my mind. I remember sitting in the car being, uh, I want to be able to play basketball again. It, it was obviously not your light accident. And then all, all the questions I were asking, not young and naive, 18, were can I play basketball again? It wasn't even can I walk again. So once, once they kind of said, look, we feel like you can get, make a full recovery, you've got to learn how to walk and run and all that again. Once I started to get my feet underneath me, I just had one goal, and it wasn't without challenges. Even once I made it back, there was I think after my first game in the NBL, I could barely walk. Um, so there was a time where it was unknown, but there was also a time where it was like it was the only goal I had, and that was to get back and. So I probably do say when I stand here now, all those years later, and it's funny, Pete said the other day when I first started, his second eldest was four, now she's almost 18. Um, so it makes me feel like I've, I've got older and I've played a long time, she's been there for my whole career, but it's one thing I'm definitely a little bit more thankful for now, just uh, having that I went through that and to now be still here playing. I think in my career I've missed five games through injury, five, maybe six. Um, and three of those were concussions. So I've done a pretty good job considering I started it with a broken pelvis. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I want you to pull that out, Kaz. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to find that out before the weekend. I was trying to think of how many NBL games I would have been. And then I thought to myself, here you go, I thought John Casey would be one of the only very few that's been to it, like, more. And then I've been going since I was the Razorback game since I was seven. Yeah. So that was every home game for, how long, 10 years? Yeah. And uh, I've been playing for 15.